Recently, a clash between Indian and Chinese army soldiers was reported near Tawang in Arunachal Pradesh. While reading about the incident, I found out something interesting. Something very significant is happening in the state of Arunachal Pradesh, the land of rising sun. Massive infrastructure development is going on in the state, starting from highways, tunnels, bridges, airports, airstrips, etc. A large number of upgradation, expansion and greenfield highway projects is going on. But what's so special about these highways? We'll find out soon enough. We will also discuss the significance of these infrastructure projects in the context of India-China border conflict and why Tawang is central to this whole conflict. Hello guys, I am Saurabh and welcome to The Ark. Let's start with the road projects. In the past 8 to 10 years, several big development projects have been approved for Arunachal Pradesh including the whopping 44,000 crore rupees worth of projects for 2,574 kilometers of roads approved in November last year. So essentially there are three major highway projects that we need to discuss. The Trans Arunachal Highway, the East-West Industrial Corridor Highway and the Arunachal Frontier Highway. Let's discuss this one by one. The 1,840 km long Trans Arunachal Highway running horizontally in the midway of Arunachal Pradesh from Tawang in the west to Mahadevpur in the east was first approved in 2008. However, the construction work didn't progress as per plan. Pace of construction picked up later and as of October 2022, more than 90% of the work on this two-lane highway is complete and the rest will be completed by 2024. It comprises of the National Highway 13, parts of NH15, NH215, and a new alignment is being converted from State Highway 25 to the National Highway. As you can see this, Trans Arunachal Highway spans the entire length of Arunachal Pradesh from west to east. Starting from Tawang in the west, goes via Bomdila, Seppa, the famous Zero Town, then Alo, Asighat, Roing, Teju, Namsai, Changlang, Khonsa, and ends at Kanubari at the Assam Arunachal Nagaland Tri Junction. It is further connected to Akajan in Assam via the Bogibil Bridge over the Brahmaputra River. This 2400 km long highway is the lifeline of Arunachal Pradesh as it passes through 16 districts of the state. This was the alignment that was first proposed in 2008 by the PWD Department of Arunachal Pradesh. The alignment now is more or less the same, but at some points, new alignments are being executed to shorten the distance. As you can see, this highway is the only highway that leads to Tawang and the Bhutan-China border. For now, all the supplies for the military deployments near the border with China have to use this particular highway. This makes the highway extremely important strategically. Now before moving forward to the next highway, it's important to mention the two tunnels that are being constructed on the baliapara chardwar tawang axis, that are the Nechipu and Sela Tunnel. If you have ever been to Tawang, You'd know that if you want to go to Tawang from Tejpur, you have to go via Balipara, Chardwar, Valukpong, Bomdila and Dirang. A tunnel is now being constructed at Nechipur near Balukpong. It's a 500 meter long, single tube, double lane tunnel at an altitude of 5700 feet. The tunnel on the Baliapara Chardwar Tawang road will ease travel for both the civil and military convoys towards the border areas that is often disrupted near the Nechipu Pass due to extremely foggy conditions. And it will also reduce travel time. The second and the most strategic tunnel being constructed is near the Sela Pass. Sela Pass, as you can see here, completely freezes in the winters, causing disruptions in movement towards and from Tawang. As the pass closes in the winters for close to three months, it becomes a choke point, making Tawang and the border areas inaccessible by road for the military. Hence, it was decided to construct a tunnel near the Sela Pass and work started in 2019 with an estimated cost of Rs. 700 crores. Being constructed under BRO's project Vartak at above 13,500 feet, the Sela Tunnel comprises of two tunnels. One is twin tube 1555 meters long which includes one main tube and one escape tube. And the other one is single tube and 980 meter long.
Once finished, it will be world's longest by land tunnel above the altitude of 13000 feet. It is slated to be open for public in April this year. The tunnel will reduce travel time by close to 1 hour and provide all weather connectivity to Tawang and the border areas. The tunnel width and height are designed in a manner for all kinds of military vehicles to pass through. Now let's come to some strategically important bridges built on the Trans Arunachal Highway in the past few years. The Divang River Bridge connecting Dambok and Drawing was opened for public in 2018. At 6.2 km, it is India's second longest bridge. The second bridge that was inaugurated in January this year is the 100 meters long Siom Bridge on the Along Inkyong Road over the Siom River. It's a class 70 steel arch superstructure bridge. That means it can carry vehicles weighing 70 tons, which includes tanks, artillery, BMPs, etc. The next one is Sisseri Bridge. This was inaugurated in November 2019. Situated near Dambuk, this bridge will improve connectivity between Pasighat and Rowing. Since we are discussing strategically important bridges, there are two other bridges that are not in Arunachal Pradesh but are in Assam. But these two bridges are extremely critical for connectivity to Arunachal Pradesh. The Bogiville Bridge and the Bhupen Hazarika Setu Inaugurated in 2018, Bogiville Bridge is a 4.94 km long combined road and rail bridge over the Brahmaputra River connecting the Rangia Murkong Selek section. The Bhupen Hazarika Setu, also known as the Dhola Sadia Bridge, was inaugurated in 2017. It's a bridge over the Lohit River, a tributary of the Brahmaputra. At 9.15 km in length, this is India's longest bridge. It connects northern parts of Assam with eastern Arunachal Pradesh. The main reason for highlighting these river bridges is that these bridges are important not only for socio-economic development of the region, but are also important strategically from a military standpoint. Now let's take a look at the highway map again. Here you can see the Trans Arunachal Highway designated as NH13. Below this highway lies the NH15 west to east. People in the vicinity primarily use these two highways for communication. But the problem is NH15 lies in the state of Assam. So there is a gap between these two highways along the lower foothills of Arunachal Pradesh that lack a proper highway for communication. To eliminate this connectivity problem, a new highway called the East-West Industrial Corridor Highway was conceptualized. The highway will originate from Bhairavkund on the Arunachal Assam Bhutan Tri Junction on the west and will traverse through Bhalukpong, Saijosa, Naharlagun, Kamle, Pasighat, Wakro, Manmao, Khonsa, and will end at Kanubari at the Assam Arunachal Nagaland Tri Junction. Some parts of this two-lane 967km long highway coincide with existing highways and the rest will be greenfield alignment, including some greenfield bridges. The highway project is currently in DPR stage and the work is expected to start soon. Now moving forward to the third and most strategic among all, the Arunachal Frontier Highway. The Government of India sanctioned Rs 27,349 crores for this highway in November last year. This highway will run close to India, Tibet, China, Myanmar border and at some points it will be as close as just 20 km from the border. This new highway will be two lane 1465 km long and will be designated as NH913. It will start near Tawang and will traverse through West Kameng, East Kameng, Upper Subansiri, Shi Yumi, Upper Siang, Divang Valley, Desali, Hawaii, and will end at Bijayanagar in Changlang district. More than 50% of the highway will be greenfield as there are no existing roads on these stretches. Its importance can be assessed from the fact that China officially opposed this very highway project in 2014. But finally after 8 years, the project is on. We have covered 3 important highways. But what about interconnectivity? As you can see, all these three major highways run horizontally from west to east. Hence, to improve connectivity between these three highways, more than six vertical and diagonal inter-corridor projects are going on, linking these highways. It includes the Thelamara Tawang Nelia Highway, Itakhola Pakekasang Sepa Parsiparlo Highway, Gogamukh Talia Tato Highway, 
Akajan Georging Pango Highway, Hanini Hunli Rowing Highway, and so on and so forth. The roads and bridges are now being upgraded, keeping movement of all kinds of heavy military equipment in mind. They are extremely critical for quick deployment of army troops and equipment to the border areas along China, without depending on the air force for airlifting. But who is carrying out this massive road and infrastructure projects in such mountainous and hostile terrain of Arunachal Pradesh? There essentially are five major players that are the Border Roads Organization, the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, the National Highways and Infrastructure Development Corporation Limited, Central PWD, and State PWD. While all the agencies are doing some extraordinary work here, it's important to mention the remarkable efforts by BRO for constructing and maintaining these roads and bridges in such a challenging environment. We'll try to cover major BRO projects in a separate video. But let's take a look at how and where they operate. Infrastructure development has not been restricted to roads only. Indian Railways is conducting a survey for three new lines in Arunachal Pradesh that are Bhalukpong to Tawang, Silapathar to Bame, and Pasighat to Rupai. Three airports have also been upgraded for commercial operations in the past five to six years. In Pasighat, Teju, and the most recent one, the Itanagar Airport, also known as Donipolo Airport which was inaugurated on 19th November last year by PM Modi. Now coming to India-China border conflict, Arunachal Pradesh and specifically Tawang has been a huge bone of contention. Tawang has a long history, being a part of Tibet and a prominent center of Tibetan Buddhism. The Tawang Monastery, which is the largest monastery of India and also one of the oldest, was founded as per the wishes of the fifth Dalai Lama in 1680. In 1914, a meeting was held in Shimla between the representatives of Britain, Tibet, which was independent then, and China. In the meeting, the McMahon line was outlined that kept Tawang on the Indian side. China, however, didn't accept the McMahon line then. When the civil war ended in China and Mao's People's Republic of China came to power, Tibet was annexed by China in 1950. In 1959, the 14th Dalai Lama escaped to India. And then the events led to the 1962 war with China, on both the western theatre along Ladakh and on the eastern theatre along the McMahon line in Arunachal Pradesh. Arunachal Pradesh used to be called as NEFA or the Northeast Frontier Agency then. PLA soldiers crossed the McMahon line and mounted an attack. Tawang and Bomdila had fallen. Their attack reached close to Tezpur in Assam. On 20th November 1962, PM Jawaharlal Nehru addressed the nation on radio and said, You Chinese armies have been marching in the northern part of Nefa. We have had our reverses at Walang Sela and today Bomdila, a small town in Nefa, has also fallen. We shall not rest till the invader goes out of India or is pushed out. I want to make that clear to all of you and especially our countrymen in Assam to whom our heart goes out at this moment. Tezpur and Assam were left to their fate. Bank managers started to burn currency notes and people started to flee Tezpur. But that story is for another video. Finally, a ceasefire was announced on 20th November 1962. PLA retreated from Nefa. India was badly defeated in the war. Now coming back to Tawang. The Chinese have been claiming Tawang and Arunachal Pradesh as their territory and in the past have also expressed their willingness to exchange territory with India on at least three occasions. Dai Bingguo was Beijing's special representative on the border dispute with his Indian counterparts between 2003 and 2013 said, if the Indian side takes care of China's concerns in the eastern sector of their border, Dai said, 
the Chinese side will respond accordingly and address India's concerns elsewhere. Clearly it was not acceptable to India then nor is it acceptable now. We have had our vulnerabilities in the past in Arunachal Pradesh and India has been quite defensive with respect to infrastructure development in the state. China on the other hand has developed massive road, railway networks and airstrips on their side of the border. It has also been reported that China has been settling villages near the border areas. But we are finally catching up with the Chinese and even matching them with infrastructure and equipment. The results you might have seen the recent clash in Yangtze in Tawang. How the Indian army fiercely pushed the PLA back. Clearly, it's not 1962 anymore. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon with a new video.